one of the important problem in the fillet welded design let me read the problem a tie member of a truss consisting of an angle section isa 65 by 65 by 6 of fe 410 grade is welded to a 8 mm thick gusset plate design a weld to transmit a load equal to the full strength of the member assume that the soft welding is done on three sides of the member okay in this problem they asked to connect a angle section of size 65 by 65 by 6 mm to a gusset plate of 8 mm thickness the welding is asked to done at the three sides end as well as at the sides okay here if you see the cg of the angle section angle section is <coughs> doesn't have, have have a cg at the middle because if the plate means we know that cg is at the middle for angle sections the cg is at somewhere nearer to the outstanding leg that is at a distance of 18.1 mm from the bottom edge not 1.8 18.1 mm from the bottom edge this has to be obtained from the steel table they asked to design this connection that uh, the load is directly not given we have to calculate that strength of the angle section okay for that first we need the area of the section so from steel table we can take down the area of the angle section isa 65 by 65 by 6 as 744 mm square the central distance since it is an equal angle central distance is equal distance from either side it is 18.1 mm okay first we will calculate the strength of the member tdg equal to ag into fy into 1 by gamma m not this formula is obtained from the class 6.2 page number 32 Okay, let me go to that page. See, this is section six point two, page number thirty two. They provided T D G equal to A G into F Y by gamma M naught, where A G is the gross area, F Y yield is the yield stress of the material. So, Indian mid structural steel is having a yield strength of two fifty mega pascal. Gamma M naught is the partial safety factor value that can be obtained from the table five. then page number 30 see that this is the partial safety factor gamma m not for yielding that value is 1.10 let me come back to the problem so now we know all now know the all the values of ag is 744 fy is 250 gamma m not is 1.1 substituting that we got the value of 169.09 kN this is the tension value we act tensile force acting on the members for this force we have to design this connections first let me assume that this tensile force total tensile force t should be resisted by the weld providing at this three sides let me assume that p1 is the force weld resisting force uh, sorry uh, you can assume that is a force resisted by the weld at the top edge or top side let p2 equal to force resisted by the weld at the bottom edge okay so p3 is the force resisted by the weld at the end first we will fi find the strength of the weld for 1 mm length strength of the fillet weld for 1 mm length next we will calculate that what is the strength resisted at the location of the end at end at how for how much length we can provide the weld up to the width the width is 65 mm so by multiplying the length of 65 mm we can get the force p3 we can get the force p3 then considering the equilibrium equations considering the equilibrium equations we can solve the equations find the value of p1 and p2 first uh, let me calculate the strength of the weld for 1 mm length for weld design equation 
f u by root 3 into 1 by gamma m w into area of the well. This equation is provided in class 10.5.7.1.1 page number 79 in uh, IS 800. Let me go to that page. In this they did not provided that. Uh, See, this is the design strength of the fill at well. In this, they have provided only the stress values. So, if you need the strength, means we have to multiply this with the area. Okay. So, FWD equal to, I am directly writing this formula by substituting FWN in this equation. FWD equal to FU by root 3 into 1 by gamma MW into AW. AW is the area of the weld. Gamma MW is the, the partial safety factor again to get the value we have to refer the table 5 page number 30 that depending upon the fabrication location if it is in uh, shop fabrication gamma mw will be 1.25 if it is in field fabrication the value will be 1.5 okay. once we taken this formula how we can get the area of the weld by multiplying the length and throat thickness now we are aiming to find the strength of the weld for 1 mm length. So, we can put the length of the weld as 1. So, that problem is solved. Next, we have to find the TW. TW is the throat thickness. Now, how we can get that value? Multiplying with the constant K. Throat thickness K equal to, sorry, throat thickness T equal to K into S, where K is the constant. Okay that uh, value can be taken as 0 0.7 that depends upon the angle between the fusion phases that is obtained from table 22. Okay. For that we have to first assume the size of the weld yes. How we can assume the size of the weld? First we have to see the uh, code provision for the minimum size of the weld. Minimum size of the weld equal to 3 mm. How we can get this 3 mm? We can go to the uh, table. 21, huh? table 21, page number 78, in that they have provided the con conditions for the minimum size of the well, up to and including 10, 10 mm thickness, the minimum size is 3, here the angle size is 65 by 65 by 6 mm, so the size is less than 10 mm, so the minimum size of the well is 3 mm, from this I can get the value. Then next limit is maximum size of the well. For that, we have to refer the figure 17A and 17B. Okay. The figure 17A provides the maximum size of the weld for having square edge. How much maximum size can be obtained? The size of the plate minus 1.5 will give the maximum size of the weld. Then coming to the curved edges, if the members connected to the plate is having <coughs> curves, or toes, the size will be one fourth can be detected. So, the maximum size will be three fourth of the thickness. So, coming to our case, coming to our case, the, we are having square edge at one end, a curved edge at the other end. So, based on the square edge condition, I will calculate that maximum size as a total thickness is 6 minus 1.5 that is 4.5 mm. If we coming to this the curved edge 3 fourth of the thickness, thickness is 6 mm that is also 4.5. Here I am getting both the values are equal. So, I am taking 4.5 directly. If suppose both the values are unequal, one is 4.5 other is 5 mm means I have to consider the lowest value only. Okay? So, here I got the maximum size of the weld as 4.5, minimum as 3. So, in between them, I have to assume a any one suitable value. So, therefore, I am assuming the size of the weld as 4 mm. Then, I will work out the throat thickness T equal to K into S 0 0.7 into 4, 2.8 mm. Then, I will substitute the values in the strength equation. Strength of the, sorry, not plate, strength of the weld for 1 mm. FWD equal to FU by root 3. FU is the ultimate tensile strength of the plate. Here, uh, angle section. Angle section strength will be all Indian made structural steel sections are 410 grade. Therefore, ultimate tensile strength is 410 by root 3 into gamma MW. 
is 1.25 hence since the fabrication is done on shock welding done not it shock therefore gamma mw value is 1.25 okay then length of the weld is 1 throat thickness is 2.5 by using calculator i can work out the value as 530.25 newton per mm this is the strength will be resisted by the weld if you done a welding for a 1 mm length okay next let me calculate that uh, that force p3 if you see in the diagram diagram p3 up to what length we are providing the weld for a length of 65 mm so for 1 mm length if we provide a weld we can it will resist the force of 530 something so if we provide a weld for a length of 65 it will resist the, the some force that will be your p3 that will be your p3 it is very simple because welding is done for a length of 65 mm so 65 into 530.24 will give the this will be newton by dividing 1000 you can get in the kilo newton as p3 is 34.46 kilo newton among the total load if you provide a welding for a length of 65 mm at the edge will resist a force of 34.46 kilo newton okay then coming to the if you consider the horizontal equilibrium if you consider the horizontal equilibrium in the figure horizontal equilibrium in the figure so the force t is acting from left to right p1 p2 p3 are acting in the opposite direction therefore p1 plus p2 plus p3 is equal to t are you agree with this is it make sense okay fine so p1 plus p2 plus p3 equal to t let me make it as a equation number 1 let me make it as a equation number 1 then to find out the other force i am taking the moment about bottom edge taking the moment about bottom edge okay so the here i have used three terms p1 p3 and t so p1 summation of p1 plus p3 is equal to moment due to t okay let me come to the figure first see see clearly see the figures i am taking moment about the bottom edge first i will multiply p1 into moment is equal to force into perpendicular distance p1 into perpendicular distance is 65 so first let me p1 into 65 the first term is over then coming to the second term p3 p3 into p3 this welding is done for total length of 65 so the cg will be at the middle cg will be at the middle the moment is equal to force into perpendicular distance so p3 into the perpendicular distance up to the base is 65 by 2 i am summing these two values then coming to the next force p2 p2 into there is no distance because it is acting at that same line therefore p2 into 0 i am summing all these three values this is the kept on the left side right side i am taking that force t t into the perpendicular distance up to the base is how much 18.1 mm 18.1 mm so that i will kept on the right hand side here the term p2 is 0 so i will have only three terms p1 into 65 p3 into 65 by 2 equal to t into 18.1 okay let me make it as a equation number 2 here how many unknowns are there three unknowns p1 p2 p3 sir already we find the p3 value yes already we find the value of p3 okay we know the value of t so we can substitute the value of p3 and t in equation number 2 p3 value is worked out as 34.46 so you can substitute p3 value in equation number 2 the only unknown is p1 by solving this equation 2 we can get the value of p1 p1 value is equal to 29.85 kilo newton okay got it so i am substituting the value of p3 and t 
in the equation 2. So the only unknown is P1. Now we got the value of P1 as 29.85 kilo Newton. So now we know the values of P1 and P3. Only other unknown is P2. Let me come to the equation number 1. T equal to P1 plus P2 plus P3. We know the value of T. We know the value of P1. We know the value of P3. The other unknown is P2. So we can substitute the value of P1 and P3 in equation number 1. This is the equation number 1. We can get the value of P2. Simplifying this equation, we can get the value of P2 as 104.78 kilo Newton. Okay. Now we know the value of P1, P2. Next, we can find out the effective length of the weld required to resist this force P1. So effective length of the weld required for the top edge. That is to resist the force P1. P1 is 29.85 into 10 power 3, I have make it as a Newton divided by, I already found out the value of strength of the weld for 1 mm as 530.24. So in the numerator, I provided the total load in Newton, in denominator, I have provided the strength of the weld for 1 mm. So dividing this, I got the effective length of the weld required to resist the force 29.85 kN as 56.29 mm 56.29 mm then uh, next I will calculate the actual length of the weld required at the top edge I am adding uh, end returns in addition to the effective length how much end return I have to provide for one continuous edge I have to provide two times size of the weld as per the code. Here, if you see in the figure, in the top edge, how many edges are, so how many ends are continuous? If you see in the right end, it is continuous. If you consider the left end, sorry, right end is discontinuous, left end is continuous. So we need to provide end written only on the right end. Similarly, if you see in the bottom weld, bottom length weld, if you consider the left hand side, so it is continuous. Uh, it is continuous with the end weld, sir. If you consider the right end, it is discontinuous, sir. At that end, we have to provide a two times size of the weld as end return. So we have to provide for P1 as well as for P2, not for P3, because at both the ends, it is continuous. So I am calculating that actual length of the weld required at the top edge is equal to effective length plus 2 times size of the weld. Here size of the weld is 4 mm. So it is getting 64.29 mm length required. We can round off to the higher side and provide that length at the top edge. So I, I will provide a 4 mm length, 4 mm weld for a length of 65 mm at the top edge. That is over. One part is over. Coming to the bottom edge. Bottom edge First, calculate the effective length of the weld required for bottom edge to resist the force P2 is equal to P2. That is the force resisted by the weld at the bottom is 104.78 kilo Newton. I am making that into Newton by multiplying with 10 power 3 divided by strength of the weld for, weld for 1 mm length is 530.24. So, I will get the effective length of the weld required. The required is 197.61 mm. So, as per the figure, we are having right end is discontinuous, left end is continuous. At the discontinuous edge, we have to provide the end returns for an amount of two times size of the weld. So, actual length of the weld required at the bottom edge, P2 is equal to effective length plus end return. End return we need to provide for only one end, that is discontinuous end, end, that is two times size of the weld, 2s. Yes. Size of the weld is here 4 mm. So I got the value as 205.61 ohm. Mm. This is the required length. At least we got to provide this much length or more than this. Well, let me assume on the higher side as 210 mm. So provide 4 mm weld for a length of 210 mm at the bottom edge. Now the problem is over. Top we are providing 65 mm, bottom we are providing. 210 mm, 
so all the things we have need to mark in the figure at the end once again you can draw this figure at the end mark the the length of the weld at the top as 65 end as 65 bottom as 210 mm now the problem is over